Episode 99 of the BioBalance HealthCast, the Type 2 Diabetes Epidemic. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging, covering treatment and solutions that include bioidentical hormone pellet therapy, safe and affordable skin rejuvenation, and spa quality botanical skin care. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. There is an epidemic in this country that's affecting people 40 and over that has to be looked at, it has to be talked about because it's deadly, it's destructive. And the epidemic is uh, diabetes, type two diabetes. And part of why we think this epidemic has hit us so much is because we spent 30 years teaching people in school to follow the food pyramid, right. which was heavily, heavily focused on carb ingestion. And grains, not- Eat, eat those grains, not eat those carbs. Not carbs from vegetables, but carbs mm -hmm. from grains. Right. And so people have spent a lifetime eating that diet mm -hmm. and they've gotten to the point where their bodies have begun to change and the, the pancreas is beginning to burn out right. and, and it's not being able to produce uh, insulin and they're not able to uh, ingest the sugars in a, in a consistent balanced flow. Mm -hmm. and, and so today we're going to talk about the diabetic process, where it comes mm -hmm. from, how you treat it, how you predict it, how you avoid it. You know, what are the things that people need to know? This is actually starting even before we turn 40, but what what happens at 40 is women women lose their testosterone at 40 and mm -hmm. the whole process gets worse and it accelerates. So we're seeing children who have type 2 diabetes because yes. they're fat. Yes. I mean, obese, not just fat, like over a 30 BMI as a child. And I think this is partially because our gym classes went away. Yeah. You know, I mean, when oh, we yeah. were, you know, most of the people who are younger are listening to this and they're kind of going, gym class, what's that? You know, we were always required to do gym and calisthenics and we, and even as little kids, my we, son, had, we had to compete. My son's a senior in high school. He's taking his PE credit in an online course from Mizzou. I mean, really? <laughs> yeah. Well, now, my son is extremely active, I know. extremely skinny. He goes fencing three times a week. Uh, so he's, so he's very physically involved, but his schedule just didn't fit at school to work in that class. Yeah, but for most people, yeah. I mean, our daughter went to, my daughter went to a school that was, was private. She started at public, but at private, and they had required, you had to be, it was great. You had to be in a required sport. Mm -hmm. Now that was great for about 99% of the population, but then for the rest of the kids that were artistic or had other endeavors they wanted to be involved in, they've made exceptions for that and put them into like training in the gym for mm. a while and then they could go do whatever. But it is good to have every human being out there walking, exercising, running, doing things that they enjoy, like what we just, we discussed with pick, pick your sport, basically. Mm. So we've taken that away from public schooling We've not required that in public schools, and I think that's a huge shame. And we've followed the wrong food plan, even in our school lunches, for all of these years where all of us have gotten bigger and bigger. And we also use, I remember riding everywhere on a bike, even when I was like 15. I mean, you mm. didn't drive, so you rode, on, you rode on a bike. Nobody does that now, their parents drive them. Right. So now we're in a car. And, they don't walk to school. And you don't play in the neighborhood and you don't see friends in your neighborhood. And they spend more and more hours a day in front of an electronic medium mm -hmm. and they drink sugar sodas. I mean, yeah, I, 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 I'm dismayed at how many people that I know who believe they cannot get in the car unless they have 32 ounce soda. And they, and they don't even pay attention to the fact that they're drinking it and their sadly, children have. Sadly, you know, it's like, for I most got of my, my patients, we'll to, I take that away first visit. <laughs> yeah. But, but, they ingest all of this sugar without even being aware that they're ingesting it. And they don't really know the repercussions. And so part of that is the process that gets us to diabetes. And the first thing that happens is when you take in so much sugar in your diet or carbohydrate in your diet, it goes into your stomach and into the first part of your small intestine and it stimulates your pancreas to make insulin. So if you have a huge load, load of sugar, you make a huge amount of insulin to take care of that. 
So insulin then is secreted into the blood. Your, your carbohydrate becomes blood sugar. Then the insulin and the blood travel together to all your cells to make energy. So it will, the insulin carries the blood sugar into your cell so that you can have energy. Now. So the insulin itself is like the key that unlocks the cell door. Right. That's and right. without that, the blood sugar going through, the, if, if you don't have the insulin combined with the blood sugar, then the blood sugar just bounces off the cell. It doesn't get well, in. Well, if you don't have enough insulin, then the blood sugar just bypasses altogether. So, like if you have diabetes and you have no insulin, mm -hmm. then the blood, you need to have insulin to stay alive so that your cells don't all die and right. that you don't have all the diseases. Now, what Brett's describing is after years of having too much sugar and too much carbohydrate that's been wearing out your pancreas, basically, and you've been getting bigger, so it's been having to provide more uh, blood sugar to support a bigger body. Mm -hmm. Then what happens is the, the insulin and the blood sugar, just like you said, go to the cell and they bounce off. You become insensitive to all this insulin. Your body's gone up and down and up and down. And most of the people that come to see me in that first stage where you're eating too many carbs and your insulin starts overreacting to all foods. It goes way up and then way down. Then you feel tired when it goes down. So you eat something else with sugar, way up, way down. And they're like, I don't understand why I'm tired at four o'clock or three o'clock or two o'clock in the mm -hmm. afternoon because you started eating sugar or cereal or something like that right. first thing out of the box instead of a protein. So you overstimulated your, your pancreas. So now we get to, you've done this for years and years. Your pancreas is having trouble keeping up with the fat that you've gained because it has to bring it has to bring energy and, and uh, blood sugar to the fat as well, and it becomes, you become insensitive to the insulin. Insulin, when you're insensitive, you make more and more insulin, believe it or not. Because the body, body is, it's an emergency overdrive. It's right. trying to make enough because the cells are screaming for, yeah. for food, right. for energy, but the, the glucose, the blood sugar, can't get into the cell. Right. Because so, you're insulin insensitive. And so your organs start being damaged because of this. It's, it's kind of like you go to work today and somebody comes to your house and, and changes all the locks. <laughs> and, and you get home and you're trying yeah. to get in the house and you can't get in the house. So what happens when your, your insulin is there but doesn't get into the cell and your, and your blood sugar's up? Mm -hmm. Your body takes it, it has to go somewhere. Well, it takes it and makes fat. So if you're insulin resistant and you eat a normal meal, right. then you still make too much insulin and it can't get into the cell with the sugar so you're tired and then it goes and makes more fat it's this positive feedback system it's one of the few positive feedback systems we have where we make more of something and it makes more it makes us worse more of something makes us worse and obesity because of insulin resistance is that is that cycle mm -hmm. so when we do that down the line we become obese enough and our pancreas gets tired enough that it, it is not making enough insulin. So we go from making too much to being worn out and not enough. And when you hit that point, then your blood sugar goes up, okay? This okay. whole time, your blood sugar stayed relatively normal, except it drops after a meal because of too much insulin. Then we see your blood sugar starting to creep up. That indicates you've got too much body area to support and that you become insulin resistant. There's some question about whether obesity makes you insulin resistant or having so much carbohydrate in your diet makes you insulin resistant. It doesn't matter. You're going to be both if you continue to eat how we eat with cereal. Cereal should just be not even on the shelf. I mean, that's ridiculous, except for oats, possibly. But um, that it doesn't help us. I mean, it, you should have a protein in the morning, not a cereal in the morning to get your blood sugar going but not spiking and dropping it slowly comes up and goes down if you have a protein now exercise kind of comes into this whole process if you're going to run a marathon you can eat a ton of carb the night before and the morning of because you're going to burn it off mm -hmm. and that's going to give you energy to burn it off as long as you're not insulin resistant because you won't lose as much weight if do, even if running you're not a marathon. already insulin resistant, right. if you're not once already you in, become insulin resistant, right. then there are different, different answers. Right. You're still not going to lose the same weight as somebody who's normal. Yes. So a calorie is not a calorie is not a calorie. It is how your body metabolizes the calorie. 
So a calorie in is not a calorie out for people who have insulin resistance. And the end point is diabetes. So we have a third of the country that's obese and becoming diabetic. Well, you keep saying obesity. What's the technical definition of obesity? Obesity means that your, be, your uh, body mass index, uh -huh. do you remember the formula? The body uh, mass index is over 30. I have it written 30. down somewhere. And uh, usually you can, you can look that up yes. on the internet and find it. Or you, you can do You take the math. your weight uh, and divide it by your height in inches. Right. And your then you in multiply pounds. that not weight in pounds and divide it by your height in inches and multiply that number by 703. And that gives you a body mass index. Mm -hmm. And if your body mass index is over 30, then you are technically obese. The only caveat to that is if you have a lot of muscle and, bo and dense bone, um, your BMI is going to look higher. It's going to look obeser than you are. Mm -hmm. Your size is going to be smaller because muscle is much smaller than the same weight in fat. The, a pound of fat is like something like this, and a pound of muscle is like this. So you may look lean and you may be lean, but in some people the body mass index is elevated, usually not to 30. Usually yeah. uh, healthy is 25 and below. Pre-obese is 25 to 30. So you want to be 25 or less, and that's, that's ideal. Not many people in the U.S. are 25 or less. No, I have a scale at home that I get on whenever I weigh myself, and it calculates that mm -hmm. and tells me the percentage. And uh, when I look at that, I always say, I have really dense bones. <laughs> you probably do. <laughs> yeah, but that's a, that, that's a good denial. Yes, denial I'm, I've got those. I've it's, got them covered. It's really good to know what it is so that you can watch it go down while you're exercising and eating a low-carb diet. But that's the key to all these diets is they don't work unless you have a low carbohydrate uh, diet because your insulin keeps sabotaging you. Mm -hmm. So you, to get your insulin sensitivity down to normal, to be, stop craving carbs because insulin insensitivity makes you crave carbs, if, to get everything back to normal, you have to be without carbs for two to four weeks wow. to recalculate your body. Then you have to stay on a very low carb diet meaning low grains, not, sugar, not fruits and vegetables, but low grains and sugar. Okay, so there are carbs in grains, yes. there are carbs, carbs in, in fruit, fruit and there vegetables. are carbs in vegetables. And so... So you, how, how does one know? Well, carbs in fruit and vegetables do not have the same effect on insulin as carbs in grains and sugar, okay? And, and do you know why that is? Well, it's because it's a more of a fructose, and it's a fructose in fruits, and it doesn't have as... We're not talking about corn fructose, that's a whole different thing. Okay. But fruit fructose in fresh fruits is metabolized differently and doesn't signal the insulin to, to increase as much Okay. And uh, as, as it would if it were a grain. And in vegetables like carrots, some people don't eat carrots on Atkins diet, which is kind of crazy because they don't do a thing to your insulin. Mm. So just, you can eat carrots. They're just filler. They're, yeah, they're, they're, mostly, um, they're mostly just fiber. So, Fiber is okay, and you they need put fiber. that under carbs, and you need fiber, but the grains and the sugars are the ones that hyper secrete, uh, cause you to hyper secrete insulin. So we want you to be on a low insulin secretion, save it for later, and don't and don't get so big that you can't accommodate. It. I'm laughing because I'm glad I have you to explain this to me, and my wife explains it to me on a regular basis. Somehow, <laughs> it's kind of like the the blood sugar and the and the insulin. It doesn't bond, and so the data just doesn't stay in my head. Because the other day <laughs> you don't I was wanted to stay in your well, head. Well, I've I've heard it's mind over matter. I've heard the message from you: low carb diet, low carb diet, low carb diet. So the other day we were eating this dish that my wife fixes. It's uh, cannellini beans, kale, and spicy sausage. Really good stuff. And I was all proud of myself because I wasn't eating any carbs. And she said, oh, you're eating carbs. I said, no, <laughs> beans, beans are a protein. And she said, but they're a carb too. And I'm like, no, no, beans are a protein. So then she goes to the cabinet and pulls out like five or six different cans of different kinds of beans. God and we're bless having a, Phyllis. We're having a little lesson. <laughs> okay, this kind of bean has this many carbs but this much fiber. This kind of bean is, and they do have carbs in them. And your son's going like this. No, he's he's a, he's a scientist, and he and he likes to watch her work me, uh, so it, it, it's all good. But okay. it, but I have trouble k figuring out or retaining, attending to what are carbs. Well, there are applications you can put on your phone that tell you how many carbs are in everything. Okay. And and I don't actually I don't have a. 
There's like four or five of them. Okay. And so you can go in, on the app store and get your apps for your phone and, and look for something like that. If like you a don't, carb counter? Like or a, a carb counter. Okay. So you can figure out how many carbs are in a certain amount of food. So when they say it's a serving, you have to see how much that serving is. <laughs> yeah. So if they say, oh, it's 15 carbs in a handful of whatever, then you can't eat three handfuls unless you want to add them all up. And 25 carbs I, per feeding is all your, your pancreas can per handle. Per feeding. Per feeding. I can tell you, I was in a store yesterday, a chocolate fudge graham cracker cookie has 15 carbs and a serving is one. That's oh, right. Two, it, that's too many. Two's too many. <laughs> And, and you, you can can't have one just and a half. eat one. <laughs> <laughs> so and and so so my rule of thumb, I, I have a we use Take Shape for Life as our that's a diet plan in our office, and it is based on all of this. It's based on getting you away from carbs, decreasing your insulin reactions, making you realize what a carb is and what a carb is, and educating you while you're on on um, one meal, one full meal a day that's low carb, and then six, five, excuse me, five shakes or five bars or five other things that are low carb made by the company that does Take Shape for Life. Right. And we have counselors in our office for our patients as well because if you don't know what- Because there are a lot of people like me that right, don't if, know this stuff and or And they don't help you meal plan. Right. And for me, I love this diet. I've used this diet on and off my whole life. I mean, yeah. ever since it came out because basically I don't have to think. Anything that makes me not have to think about what I eat is better because I don't want to have to prepare. I mean, except for dinner, I don't want to have to think about it all day. I just want to have, not be hungry. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they have, you have a shake in the morning, you have a bar in mid-morning. I mean, I can do my office and never really stop. So you don't do food for pleasure? I do food for pleasure, but if it's not great food, it's not pleasure. Okay. I mean, I don't do, a ham sandwich isn't pleasure for me. I mean... A wonderful Italian meal, veal, parmesan, or whatever, is pleasure for me. Mm -hmm. But, but I've I've gotten that out of my system yeah. long ago. Yeah. And I was put on I was actually put on this diet long ago before I knew I was going to be a doctor. Then knew, knew I'd actually be one. I thought I wa I was going to be one, but I didn't know. But I I went to college and ate their food versus my mother's food, which was right. low carb. Right. And fresh fruit and fresh vegetables and so I go to college and it's all carbohydrates. So you didn't do the Italian thing and eat all the pastas? We ate pasta once a week. Once a week. I mean that's right. yeah that's okay I mean you can do that yeah, you just yeah. have to eat a small amount of noodles and a lot of sauce but you can do that. Right. But um, no we were very low carb no desserts ever we never had a dessert in the house or anything sweet so I go to <laughs> go to college and I think I'm eating very little because I'm eating these tiny little portions but it's all carbohydrate and I start getting fatter and fatter and then I start drinking coffee to stay up at night and coffee <laughs> stimulates insulin. So I have, I'm on a million cups of coffee a day and all this carbohydrate and no real food and I'm gaining weight, my hair's falling out, everything terrible is happening. My mom takes me to this doctor of osteopathy in North Kansas City, far away from our home and she saved my life. Yeah. She literally saved my life because my thyroid had died under all this stress. <laughs> right. And it's family history, so she replaced my thyroid with natural thyroid, which works beautifully, armor thyroid. And then she sat me down, and she told me that I had to stop eating carbs. I had to buy my own food at school, put them in a refrigerator. We didn't have refrigerators in our rooms or anything. There was right. one refrigerator, and you prayed no one ate it. And then, um, and then you had, I had to f eat nuts all the time to keep my blood sugar up, but not mm. let it go down too low. I couldn't have, she said, no al alcohol, which was big at college, no, um, no sweets at all, no breads, no carbs, no pastas. All the forms of sugar. And no, no caffeine, which I had to like go to bed for a week to get past that because wow. that's like an addiction. Yeah. And so no caffeine for an entire year before I could add things back. Wow. But I did it because she said, if you don't do this, it was so cute. I mean, nowadays we would never say this. She said, she said if you don't do this, you're gonna, you're gonna be like this the rest of your life and no one will ever marry you. <laughs> I mean, who says that? But she made that, that hit my button. Right. And I went, whoa, okay, I guess I'm motivated. She, she spoke in a language yeah. you could understand. Yeah. So it was. So, so the challenge for all of this though is to pay attention early enough to try to avoid diabetes. 
right. not to try to treat diabetes once you have it. There are treatments for it that can help you get more out of your life, but you'll get so much more out of your life if you avoid it. And you have a, a six-step recommendation mm -hmm. for avoiding getting diabetes. And yes. I think we could maybe end today by going through those six points. Okay. Well, you, All you right, start. I, I have them in front of me. The first one is don't overeat carbs, which is what right. you've been talking We've about been this talking whole about. time. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things that you're talking about is how saturated because of the food pyramid, because of processed foods, because of convenience foods that fewer people are cooking at home and especially from fresh ingredients. Uh, I remember when I went to college, we all talked about the freshman 10 for the oh, same yeah. reason. Yeah, you, now you it's quit a freshman 25. Meal. It is. I talk to kids today that have gone off to college and that's what comes out of their mouth. Oh, the freshman 25. And the difference is the lifestyle change of the nation over the years since I went to college. I thought it was just beer. Uh, but it's sugars in alcohol. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know. it's all of those things. Uh, the second thing, treat testosterone deprivation when it occurs early. Right, early on, because when your testosterone decreases, we've talked about this before, estrone, the old lady estrogen in both men and women, mm -hmm. increases, increases belly fat, which starts triggering this process, this positive, it's not positive, but it's a positive feedback system. It keeps going, so it makes you hunger for carbs and then you make more fat when you eat them and your insulin keeps going up, you become insulin resistant when testosterone drops. For women, it's around 40 to 45. For men, it's, it's as soon as you lose your sex drive. Basically, when you lose your sex drive, basically that's it. And for men, it's 55 and up. Hmm. So as soon as it's gone- So would you rather have sex or sweets? That's right, and that's a question. Yeah. But when I take somebody's soda away from them in my office, yeah. It's like I've taken their best friend away. Oh, it is. I mean, because and, it's an addiction. And it's I, the caffeine and but the sugar. But they need to have a best friend and not soda. Yeah, a real know? best friend. A real best friend. Yeah, a not a blow-up doll. Friend. Okay. So then, <laughs> then your other recommendation. <laughs> that must have just come out. It did. The third recommendation is if you're pre-diabetic, uh, treat insulin resistance or the beginning of mm -hmm. insulin resistance with metformin. Right, because it's very hard to lose weight once you're already there mm -hmm. and your triglycerides are up and your blood sugar may be up a little bit, but you're gaining weight and usually right around the middle. Mm -hmm. You have to treat that to make you insulin sensitive. And the only drug out there right now that makes you insulin sensitive is metformin. It's an old drug always used for diabetes in the past. Doctors tended not to treat prediabetes in the past, but they're coming around, but I've used metformin with insulin resistant patients right. for 15 or 20 years. Yeah. So it's an, it's an old drug it. and it works. Mm -hmm. And you okay. take it with each meal. If you take it without food, it doesn't work. So remember that. But you take it with each meal or extended release one time a day with your meal and it helps you lose weight faster and it brings you back faster. Okay. So that's, that's the goal. And the fourth thing you say is avoid damaging your pancreas by treating gallstones if you have right. gallstones and avoiding overconsumption of alcohol. Yes, because if you do those, if you have gallstones, you can block the exit of insulin and, and your pancreatic acids. So it backs up, it basically backs up. It's much more complicated than that, but it blocks the insulin and damages the pancreas. So you can't make insulin like you should and it also damages your liver. And liver right. is where the blood sugar goes first. Right. So it goes into your liver, you store some in your liver and then it goes out into your bloodstream. So you can't, alcohol's a carb, all alcohol's a carb. So you can't, you, that's the food part of it, but then the damage to the liver, getting a fatty liver makes you not process sugars very well and it makes you gain weight and it makes you literally ill. And as you lose weight, if you, can re if you can change this around and be proactive, if you have gallstones that are giving you pain, get rid of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, that means something bad's happening in your body, and you don't want to have one of these things blocked off. Don't just sit there and go, oh, doing nothing is better. It's not. Pain isn't something that you just suffer. Pain is a signal that something is wrong. Yeah. Do something it, it, about yeah. it. Yeah. So you need to keep your pancreas and your liver for growing old. Okay. Then the fifth thing is maintain your ideal weight and exercise program. Yes. Once mm -hmm. you've lost down to where you want to be, you got to stay there. Right. And and losing is really really hard. And that and that's why I've had to use I've used the Take Shape for Life right. shakes. I have them in my office, and as soon as I've gone on vacation or had 
way too much fun on the weekend, then I just spend two or three days just eating, drinking you sort shakes. sort of have that planned indulgence, and then right. you come back and discipline and yourself. Then, then it goes back off, right. so I don't get in that process again. And then the last one is uh, for women who've gone through menopause. Treat menopause with non-oral estradiol treatments. Right. right. Why non-oral? Non-oral because when oral estrogen goes through your stomach to your liver and then the rest of your body, it is changed into estrone. Okay. Estrone is the, is the estrogen that makes you fat. So you don't want to take estrogens orally. You want to take them transdermally, um, creams, gels, patches, and my, my favorite is pellets because you have to think about it, but every four months. So, so the metabolic process of digestion actually changes the chemical structure and makes right. it something it else. It does. It's called the first pass effect, meaning that hormone in its very first pass, before it goes to the rest of your body, is changed into something else. Mm -hmm. So it may be estradiol when you take it, but it's estrone when it gets to your body. Right. And that's not a good estrogen. Right. Now, there are radical interventions like bariatric surgery that will stop diabetes. Mm -hmm. But most of the people that have bariatric surgery and lose a, a, a huge amount of weight, put it back on within a year. Yeah, they do. Because they don't change these other things. So it's a program, it's a package, but it's it will- It's a lifestyle change. And it's sometimes it's very, not your fault, that's how your family ate. I mean, you have to break away from how your family right. ate. You have to break away from how you were trained in school. You have to do something different and radical to be better and healthy, but you're the one living in your own body. You're the one that is going to have to live with yourself, not your family, for the rest for the rest well, of your life. And you might as well have a low maintenance body by keeping it from it's, having it's diabetes. It's a lifestyle change, but it's a life saving change. Yes, so is. save your own life. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance Healthcast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. Follow Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Brett Newcomb can be found at brettnewcomb.com.